started when Fujihiro Yamauchi began manufacturing and selling playing cards in 1889. Since then, they have been leaders in the game industry by introducing various disruptive innovations. In 1977, they introduced the TV game, a series of home-dedicated consoles. Their next innovation was NES, in 1985, one of the most influential video game systems which helped the company grow internationally. Nintendo continued introducing disruptive innovations, such as the Game Boy in 1989, a handheld device that outgrew its competitors. Wii, released in 2006, has even more advanced features compared to the previous consoles and has introduced a totally new way of gaming. Finally, in 2011, Nintendo released 3DS, the first portable game console able to project 3D effects without 3D glasses or any additional accessories. Oh, Nintendo, I just miss playing Mario with I my brother. I used to play all know? day on my Game Boy when I was a kid. The world is facing a remarkable disruptive situation, the appearance of ubiquitous computing. Computing is everywhere, technology is integrated in our everyday life, and the perfect expression is the popular smart devices such as tablets and smartphones. They are multitask. Previous devices like a phone, a clock, a calculator, an agenda or a video game are now integrated in the same device. Mobile computing, mobile communications and video gaming now collide. They are portable. We see people using smart devices in their house, their car, at work, just everywhere they go. As a result, casual gaming in our everyday life has become increasingly popular and has replaced the demand for gaming dedicated consoles. Alright, so there are two disrupting trends in the gaming market. First, there is an increasing rate of smartphone use. 116 million smartphone users in the US by the end of the year and polls show that 28% of them agree that mobile technologies are the biggest game-changing ones. Also, the amount of time US consumers spent on mobile devices will grow by 51% this year and the yearly growth of smartphone shipping is 45%. Secondly, smartphones are multitask and support gaming. 86% of people use the smartphones while watching TV. Games represent 70% of the Apple Top 200 grossing apps making mobile gaming the largest category of daily app consumption. This is why Apple made it to Guinness Book of World Records for fastest selling portable gaming system. iOS and Android together stole the lead in mobile gaming revenue from Nintendo. 58% of revenues in 2012 from 34% in 2010. The video game world has drastically transformed, giving Nintendo two alternatives to adapt in order to maintain at the top. 1. Develop their world-famous games for smart devices such as tablets and smartphones which have spread all over the world at an amazing pace. 2. Develop their own smart devices and form part of the new ubiquitous computing and entertainment market. So, what are they doing now? Well, they have decided they will only develop content for their own hardware, refusing to bring their popular franchise games to platforms like iOS or Android. And they will only produce gaming dedicated devices, meaning they won't develop any type of smart devices and they will keep focusing on an isolated video game market that no longer exists. Now, the question we ask is, can I do this wherever I am and keep doing it through all the week in just one device? Well, with Nintendo, you can't. They have this strong belief that if they change, they will stop being Nintendo. They for sure should give it a try. They have a vast amount of idiosyncrasy credits that are waiting to be spent. The boom of ubiquitous computing has arrived and Nintendo's inability and unwillingness to adapt has taken them from industry leader to brink of extinction. According to contingency theory, a successful leader can fail when its context changes. And figures don't lie. In 2012, Nintendo reported their first ever annual operating loss of $466 million. But we observed that, on occasion, there was a different kind of technology that came into an industry that always killed the leaders. And we called this type a disruptive innovation. We use this word disruptive not because it was a breakthrough improvement, but in instead of sustaining that trajectory, it disrupted it by bringing to the market a product that actually wasn't as good as what these people were making back there. But this was a much simpler, more af affordable innovation that allowed a whole new population of customers to now own it and use it, who previously didn't have access to this.